During the early years of flight history, if pilots needed to escape from an aircraft, they had literally to jump out and pull a parachute cord. But by the 1940s, with the introduction of faster jet-powered aircraft, this over-the-side technique became a physical impossibility. In 1944, the Ministry for Aircraft Production invited Sir James Martin, the founder of the Martin Baker Aircraft Company, to invent a safe way for pilots to leave a heavily damaged aircraft. It soon became clear that the best way of ejecting a pilot was to set off an explosion which would force the seat, with the pilot still strapped in it, through the canopy of the aircraft. This line here represents 60 years of ejector seat evolution, from the most modern designs up here, right the way back to this revolutionary design of the mid-1940s, not the earliest ejector seats. From the moment they pulled this handle, there were 14 seconds until they were clear of the aircraft. It must have been terrifying. The first ejection seat, known as the Mark I, rapidly became standard issue in all military aircraft. However, over the years it has continued to be developed to cope with increasingly sophisticated and fast aircraft. Today it only takes a vertebrae challenging 1.2 seconds for a pilot to be ejected from an aircraft. Is an ejector seat just one big explosion? A lot of people think that, but really when the pilot pulls a the handle, there's some 17 explosives in this seat that operate simultaneously with each other. And all those 17 explosives, they effectively fire in less than 1.2 seconds. 17 explosives? Right. So it saved a lot of lives. We've made around 70,000 ejection seats, and we've had about 7,300 ejections, which means every one in 10 seats that you see here will be used in a live ejection. One of these 7,300 lives saved by an ejection seat is RAF navigator John Nickel. On the 17th of January 1991, his tornado was struck by a surface-to-air missile whilst on a sortie over Iraq. So what were you doing in the tornado that day? What was the mission? It was the first Gulf War. Myself, my pilot, John Peters, were part of a formation attacking an airfield in southeastern Iraq. The tactics at the time were to fly as low as possible. You are flying into a wall of explosive lead and you can't do anything about it. And we were running from the target area, still at ultra low level, 30, 40 feet, still at very high speed. And suddenly there was an enormous explosion. A surface wave heat seeking missile had hit the back of the aircraft. And the aircraft's tumbling, it's shaking, it's rocking. Sirens are going off in the cockpit, warning lights are flashing. And I said to my pilot, uh, John, I said, look, we've got to get out of here. We've got to eject. So talk me through exactly what happened after you, after you pulled that handle. There is a pause, and I think Martin Baker said it's about a hundredth of a second between pulling the handle and everything kicking into motion, and it felt like a lifetime. I could see great big rocket flames of rocket coming out of my backside, which is the seat rocket pack firing, and it shoots you up into the air, and, but within, you know, within a second, like that, there's noise and confusion and chaos and fear, and then there's another crack. The parachute billows out above your head. And there's silence. Because this is a reality. This, this is what would have happened when the, when the plane hits the ground. That's where the aircraft hits the ground at two, three, four hundred miles an hour. There's a piece of a tailplane there, there's a piece of a wing, and the aircraft simply explodes over hundreds and hundreds of yards, maybe a mile, and we would have been in that wreckage if it wasn't for the ejection seat. Once pilots have survived an ejection and landed safely, they may be in enemy territory, so the multicoloured parachute has one final use. So this is the final part of the process. And what's with the different colours? This parachute has uh, some green and some yellow sections for camouflage in the desert and in the jungle. We also have large panels of white for insulation and camouflage in snow conditions. Wow. And of course, a day glow is um, come and find me. We yeah. can spread it out on the ground to be seen. So every part of the system is used for survival. That's brilliant. Without these seats, the fastest of which will now get you out of an aircraft in around three quarters of a second, thousands more pilots would face a much greater risk of injury and death as planes get faster and more sophisticated.